Hello everybody, welcome back to Hunting Mark. I am Cameron Porter, and today we are talking about how to use a mill dot reticle. Okay, so a mill dot reticle is a type of reticle that you'll see pretty often. There are a lot of other types of reticles out there, of course, but a mill dot specifically is referring to a crosshairs that has mill that has dots spaced out one mill apart from center to center of the dot. Okay, so the standard is that each dot from the center of one dot to the center of the next dot is going to be one mil. Now, what is a mil? <laughs> a mil is a unit of measurement. It's kind of like, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a unit of measurement for an angle. So think of it like degrees. You, you could say it's a certain number of degrees or you could say it's a certain number of milliradians or mil for short. So, uh, and a milliradian is much smaller than a degree. It takes about a little over 17 milliradians, actually 17.5, I think, milliradians to equal one degree. So it's a very small unit of measurement, relatively speaking, but that's useful when you're trying to measure angles out to, you know, a thousand yards away, right? Uh, you might have the question, if you've never, if you're not really familiar with reticles or scopes or, or this type of thing at all, you might wonder why we use something like milliradians instead of something like centimeters or inches to measure. Because, and that is the reason why is because inches and centimeters and whatnot, they're they're measurements of a linear distance, and that's not what we're trying to capture here. We're trying to capture the angle because the angle applies no matter how far away the target is. So if you're at a thousand yards, uh, you need to adjust 10 mil or one mil. That, that figure applies throughout the entire range, whereas if you had markings on your scope that were a one inch marking or a two inch marking, well, that makes a lot of sense at a hundred yards, but at a thousand yards, you can't see an inch, you can't utilize a two inch hash mark or anything like that, but you can continue to utilize a milliradian mark or an MOA or something like that. So that is why we use that. But like I said, mills are not the only things that we use. There are other things that can be used, but if you're using a mill dot scope, assuming it is standard, you will have dots that are 0.2 mil in diameter. And then from center to center, of each, from center to center, from dot to dot, should be exactly one mil. Now, not all scopes that advertise as mil dot reticles are in fact true mil dot reticles. A good example is the one you see before you. This is a, uh, a fixed four power scope from CV Life. I don't remember the exact model number, but if you buy a mil dot scope from CV Life, check twice <laughs> before you buy. Uh, so we'll be using this in our example, but you'll see what we'll do. Uh, so as you're looking through this, you'll see what we've done is instead of setting up the target at 100 yards, which is where the distance between dot to dot should be 3.6 inches, and I, and I would run the numbers on that for you, but it doesn't really matter. Just remember that one mil at 100 yards is 3.6 inches. If you remember that, you're good to go. You can just math it out from everywhere else. At 1,000 yards, one mil is 36 inches. At, at 100 yards, it is 3.6. You just math it out in between. But anyways, to get this to appear, as though the one mil is 3.6 inches, we actually had to move it up significantly. That said, perfectly reputable scopes that are great, that are fantastic, and they are true mil from you know center to center of the dot, they might have dots that are only 0.1 mil in diameter, or they might have uh, like sub hash marks that are halfway in between each of the dots. They might have more information. You might have a mil dot reticle that also has a Christmas tree that you can use to more easily do combination elevation windage holds. Uh, but those are separate from the mill dots, the, but you'll see all those. What really matters is that you, you get used to your scope, you practice with your scope and your reticle so you know how it behaves and where you need to go with it. Okay, so how do you use a mill dot reticle for aiming? Well, it's very simple. You zero it at a certain distance, we're gonna assume that you zero it at 100 yards. So what that means is that at 100, when you're aiming at a target that is 100 yards away with no wind, that wherever the center of the crosshairs is, that's where your bullet is going to land. That will be your point of impact. That's what zeroing at 100 yards means. And that means you adjust the windage and the elevation knobs on the scope to get the reticle to match up with wherever your bullets are hitting. Once that process is done, anytime you change distance, you will need to either hold or dial to accommodate for that change in distance. You will not use the reticle if you are going to dial because you use the dials to dial. If you're going to hold, now you use the reticle to do so. And you do that based on knowing that one mil is 3.6 inches at 100 yards. So you combine the, 
distance between the dots that are a known distance. You know what that distance is, and then you compare that with how much the load that you're shooting is going to drop over the distance that you're measuring. So if you have a 100 yard zero and, a, and you're shooting at 200 yards, how much does your load, whether it's 556 or 308, how much does that load drop between 100 and 200 yards? If you know that amount, then you just combine that with the mill dot reticle and adjust accordingly. Pretty simple, though it sounded enormously complicated. <laughs> Next, we're gonna buy, talk about ranging. This is one of the cool things about mill dot reticles. You can use them not only for aiming, but also for ranging. And what am I, uh, so what is ranging? Uh, we're talking about range finding. How far away is the object that you're pointing at, that you're, that you're looking at through your scope? Now you can get electronic range finders that will just kind of give you a calculation of how far things away, how far it is away. But if you don't have one of those, or if it's at a battery, or you're not sure it's being accurate for you at that moment, then you can also estimate the range, sometimes very closely if you get good at it, using a mill dot reticle. There are a few things you need to know in order to successfully range find with a mill dot reticle. Number one is you have to know that your reticle is in fact accurate. It is standard mill. It is you know mill a single mill from center to center on the dots, etc. You also need to know the size of the object you're looking at. You need to know how tall it is, especially. Tall height is the easiest, but you need to know some dimension of how big it is on the X and Y plane, okay? Uh, and the reason for that is you can figure out, if you know that a mill is going to appear to be 3.6 inches distance at 100 yards, then you can compare that with how large the object appears and how large your mill actually appears uh, where that, when you line it up with that object. So you know, let's say, let's use for example, coyotes. The average adult coyote is between 21 and 24 inches tall. So you know that at 100 yards, the average uh, adult coyote should appear to be somewhere between six and 6.5 mil. That's how big it should appear at 100 yards. So if you know that, and then you also know, well, hey, it appears to be two mil. That's how tall my coyote appears to be is only two mil. You can map that out to figure out where it belongs, you know, how, how far away it is. Now here's the calculation. First, you take the height of the, the, the height that the object is supposed to be, and you times it by 27.77. Remember that number, 27.77 times it the height of the object, the known height of the object by 27.77, and then you take that figure and you divide it by the mills. So once you have that figure, all you have to do is divide it by how, how many mills tall the object appears to be. So if it appears to be two mills tall, you divide it by two. If it appears to be four mills tall, you divide it by four. However mills tall it appears to be, that's what you divide it by. And that should give you a result in yards of how approximately how far away the target is. Okay, everything I've said so far up to this point comes with one giant caveat. For the vast majority of scopes that you will use, this is only going to work at a specific magnification in the range of the, that the scope has. So if you have a 4X to 12X scope, there's only one point in the range where, that, where the mill dots will be true to value. They'll be true to scale and this math will work usually that's going to be at 10x. Not sure who made the decision, but somewhere sometime in the past, all of the scope manufacturers who make mill dot reticles decided amongst themselves that 10x would be the standard, that all of their mill dot reticles would be true to size, true to scale at 10x. Now, this might confuse you if you're pretty new to this sort of thing, so let me try to explain it as briefly and simply as I can. When you have a zoom, when you have multiple, you have a, a scope that has magnification range all the way from say 3x to 9x or 4x to 12x. As you zoom in, the image gets bigger. That's the whole point of it, right? But the reticle stays the same size. So the distance between this dot and this dot, it can't be, it can't represent 3.6 inches throughout the entire range unless it changes size. So if it stays the same size, it can't represent the same distance the whole way through. So they have to pick a range to set it at, and a lot of them set it at 10x. If it's not set at 10x, it's probably set at the highest magnification of the scope. Uh, that is the other most common uh, way to do it with mill dot reticles. Now, you might find a scope that has a first focal plane reticle. 
Uh, if that is the case, what will happen is as you zoom in and out on the magnification range, the reticle will also grow and shrink accordingly. So it will stay to scale with the image that you're seeing. And in that case, the mill dot reticle will be true throughout the whole thing. So that was a crash course in mill dot reticles. I hope that made sense. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave a Leave it in the comments below and we will do our best to respond to it. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.